Good afternoon to our viewers in Europe and good morning to our viewers in the United States. I'm Steve Sokol, the president of the American Council on Germany, and I would like to thank you for joining us for the latest installment of our virtual series titled Zupa Valia 2024. With these events, we plan to look at some of the important national elections and some of the overarching trends when thinking about elections and democracy around the world. Less than a week ago, on February 8th, some 60 million Pakistanis out of nearly 129 million registered voters took to the polls in Pakistan's general election. No one won a majority, but that did not stop multiple parties from declaring a victory. The party of Imran Khan, the imprisoned former prime minister, won the most seats, and the election results exposed deep polarization of Pakistani politics. And just yesterday, two of the major opposing parties actually both announced that they would form a government, just not with each other. So before we get into questions about how the government might shape up and what the path forward might be, I'd like to talk a little bit about the election itself. And to help us understand the situation in Pakistan, I'm joined by an expert on the region, Professor Dr. Konrad Sheta. He has been the director of the Bonn International Center for Conflict Studies since 2013. Konrad, herzlich willkommen. Merci, thank you. Hi. So, Konrad, there seem to be an incredible amount of surprise um, that Imran Khan, who is in jail, and his party, um, the PTI, did as well as they did. Were you as surprised as the media reports about the election result? Yes, I think to some extent uh, I was. I mean, we have to consider that uh, Imran Khan, uh, the head of the Pakistan Movement for Justice, the Pakistan Tariqa, in South PTI uh, is in jail. He was just jailed for, for 10 years uh, for corruption and many uh, other things. He, he, even his party couldn't um, uh, couldn't uh, uh, go, go to this election. Uh, his symbol couldn't be used. So this means that in the end, only independent candidates uh, of his party uh, could be voted for. And indeed, more, we even don't know the, 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 the number. It's something between 90 and uh, 105 uh, candidates, independent candidates, uh, are running uh, for, for, for him, for his uh, uh, Pakistan Tariqa and stuff. And it was a great uh, surprise uh, because um, we have in Pakistan a system where you have got two strong parties, uh, the Pakistan uh, Muslim uh, League on the one side and the People's uh, Party Pakistan on the other side, which for many decades are controlling uh, the voting system. Um, and here, what we can see is that no one uh, that, that no the voters candidated uh, more or less against the traditional establishment for a newcomer who already won the war was president for a couple of years, but uh, the voters very strongly ha have shown that they have an interest to for a turn for a, to a twist for a change in the overall democratic system uh, in Pakistan. And to understand this, I think important is that we have always in the back of these elections, the military as a very strong power, which was also the the the, the, the machinery behind uh, the uh, the jailing uh, of Imran Khan. So it mm -hmm. shows that the population in Pakistan is very set up with the political system and with the military um, uh, strength uh, in uh, in Pakistan. And this is, I think, the current situation uh, we can observe and where more or less the traditional establishment is not anymore backed by the population. So so sticking with that for a moment, um, you, know, you talked a little bit about how deeply dissatisfied um, the population is, that they're really sort of fed up. Um, it seems that some of the main issues revolve around unemployment, inflation, some of the environmental issues that Pakistan is in, in, experiencing, and that that basically the quality of life is very difficult for most Pakistani um, citizens. Um, can you talk a little bit about what life is like and what the important issues on motors on voters' minds was as they were going into this election. 
Well, um, uh, actually, I think Pakistan is a very rich country. And I think this is the, the issue why Pakistanis are so, so frustrated with their country. If you go back in the 1950s, uh, Pakistan was seen as a blueprint for countries like South Korea. It was one of the uh, emerging uh, developmental uh, states uh, in uh, Asia. Um, it is a uh, vast agricultural land, a very in, uh, it's, uh, intensive uh, uh, agricultural uh, industry. Uh, it is uh, rich in minerals. So it, it got a lot of, it's rested with a lot of resources which can be used. The problem in Pakistan is that all these resources are in the hands of, uh, the Pakistanis are calling this, 22 families. One of these families uh, is the, uh, the Sharif families, one of the five richest families in South Asia. So really one of the, you can just see that all these resources are controlled by a very few families. And on the flipping side, you see that um, the economy in Pakistan since the last two decades is just running down. Uh, we have, of course, a strong environmental um, uh, uh, challenges. Uh, Pakistan is one of the countries hit most uh, or strong, very strongly by uh, by the climate change. Uh, the glaciers, uh, which are melting away, less and less water they have. A lot of pollution is going on. Uh, usually when you're in Pakistan, you can be happy if you've got electricity for four or five hours a day. Uh, high employ unemployment rate, you're mentioning this, uh, the, so you, you don't have a social cohesion in the country. It is very strongly, um, you have got strong frictions uh, ethnically as well as uh, 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 you know, religion. Uh, so uh, it's a society which is not uh, satisfied and where the people don't see, particularly the youth, which are particularly the voters of uh, Imran Khan, they don't see any future for them in the country. And I think this makes it so frustrating. On the one side, to know that the country is a very rich country, and on the other one, that there's no future for most of the population, uh, and that a very few people control all of these resources. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I think that's an important um, explanation of sort of what the starting point was going into this election. And, and I'd now like to, to come back to to sort of help our, our viewers and our listeners understand a little bit more about Imran Khan, because he he was, after all, and you said this too, a former prime minister. So he didn't come out of nowhere, but he was just arrested in August of last year. Um, and you had said that that um, that he's you know going to be jailed for at least 10 years. Can you talk a little bit about what led to his being arrested and imprisoned um and and then we can get into some of the challenges interesting challenges i think that we're facing his party as well well i think there there are some uh, issues to be mentioned i think first i think imran khan is a very um, very interesting person um, he uh, is one of the famous cricket players in the world, and cricket is the national sport in um, in Pakistan. So he was in the 1970s, 90s heroes, one of the top notch heroes uh, in in Pakistan. This one has to uh, consider. He was a captain when Pakistan won 1992 the Cricket uh, World Cup. He's really a national hero, and also what is interesting, he's a dandy. So he had, uh, you don't know how many love affairs he had, how many children he has. He's really, uh, on the one side, a man where you can say it's, it's got a, he really uh, loves the life, a West, very, very Western organized, uh, Western organized person. On the other side, he's, uh, he turned, when he became a politician in the 1990s, as the main um, uh, critical voice uh, against the establishment because he's not one of, one of these, uh, of these inf influential members. So he's a kind of an anti-establishment voice. Somehow you can say it's a bit like, like Donald Trump in America, that he is the one who comes out, out not from the establishment, with a voice and saying, we have uh, to crack the whole system and come up with a new uh, system. Uh, politically, however, he is uh, very interesting because uh, he... Uh, if we followed also a very conservative line, um, he, for example, uh, was always um, uh, uh, on the, he always sided with the Taliban in Afghanistan. He was also, uh, he uh, was very much, uh, had a very strong uh, Islamist um, uh, perception. 
he uh, was very much in favor of the so-called blasphemy law. This means everyone uh, who um, uh, who spoke against uh, Islam uh, uh, sh should be um, um, sh sh should be um, uh, um, uh, put in jail. So this was a policy he very much followed up. So it was, uh, and this makes him a quite quite kind of a strange person. On the one side, uh, very liberal, and on the other side, very conservative. Um, he became uh, prime minister in 2018 uh, in a time also when the uh, economy of um, Pakistan was running down. He very much was not able to stop corruption, even under his government, uh, corruption increased. And I think there are two things which are important. The one thing is that in 2018, he sacked the then um, uh, head of the ISI, the, the intelligence service of uh, the uh, of um, Pakistan, which is very very strong, uh, Said Asim Munir Ahmad Shah, who later on became uh, the the chief of the army staff, uh, and he's currently the chief of the army staff. So as there, there's a strong rivalry between, uh, on the one side, um, uh, on the one side, um, uh, Khan uh, Imran Khan, and on the other side, uh, the chief of the army staff. And on the other side, uh, there's a so-called, um, the so-called um, 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 a challenge between him and the Americans. So he somehow. Um, uh, he, he somehow broke uh, with the Americans. He took sides with the Chinese uh, and uh, with the uh, Russians. And there's a so-called uh, letter gate uh, uh, in which the Americans and the huge conspiracy theory in uh, Pakistan that the Americans were the one uh, who uh, encouraged the Pakistan court and the Pakistan establishment uh, to jail uh, uh, Imran Khan. Uh, so this is something we have to understand that he is somehow also standing uh, for uh, for a policy which tries to get more independence uh, of the U.S. Um, and now we have a lot of accusations. Uh, there, there are certain terror, uh, anti-terror laws, and he was then uh, accused of um, more or less um, uh, providing certain information uh, with um, uh, which fall under the uh, anti-terror law. Then a lot of uh, accusations for corruption comes in, but this is not a something special. I think more or less every mm -hmm. prime minister in, in Pakistan was accused for corruption. Uh, so this is a very typical thing we find um, in Pakistan. So we can see more or less uh, in um, many ways uh, that in which the the establishment and the elites uh, tried uh, to blame him and, and to get him into jail. Mm -hmm. And and I think you know one of the important things, and and we'll come back to the role of the military in a couple of minutes. But one of the important things that that you were just talking about is um, how Imran Khan really sort of got on the wrong side of the military, if you will. And the military has played a huge role in Pakistani politics for decades at this point. Um, you had said that Imran Khan um, became prime minister in 2018, and it was I guess 2022 when he um, was was ousted in a vote of no confidence. And after that, he became very, very critical of the military, which resulted in some of the instability that we're seeing in terms Absolutely. of some of his supporters protesting, there being violence on the streets. So it's a very volatile situation even going into going into this election. But one of the things that that I find so so interesting and so curious is, um, even after he was jailed, he had a very strong following. And you touched on the fact that members of his party, the, the PTI, were not able to run as members of that party. They had to run as independents because of a, a ruling by the Pakistani Supreme Court. Um, and as you said, they, they had to um, drop their symbol um, of the cricket, the cricket bat um, in the run up to the election. And so I'm and on top of that, um, Khan was was barred from politics. And so I'm really curious to get your sense of how did the political party um, keep the momentum, despite the fact that its leader was in jail, and it didn't have some of the tools that most parties have to be able to campaign. Yeah, I think this is really the interesting thing where we can see a, a complete change in politics 
Pakistan. Um, I think the first thing we really have to understand, we have in Pakistan a system where we have uh, two political parties, uh, the PMLN, the uh, uh, Pakistan Muslim League, and the uh, People's Party Pakistan, which hate, hated each other for decades, two families on the one side, the uh, Sharif and the other side, the Bhutos, who are fighting uh, 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 on each other heavily, um, uh, uh, killed followers of the one side, supporters of the one side. So we were, were really um, in uh, in extreme um, in an extreme conflict with each other. And every time, if when when when, the, then when they were in a kind of a deadlock, in this very moment, then the the military stepped in uh, and more or less shown that we are the the, the the backbone, the one who provided order and security. And this mm -hmm. kind of system worked since the 1950s uh, until more or less now. And now Imran Khan comes in, and he uh, has as the main followers the youth, the youth which are using particular social media, um, which are not so much um, uh, following the classical structure of polit political parties, uh, which are, uh, and he, he, he was able, uh, even when he was jailed, uh, to keep, keep up this momentum, and uh, particularly by the use of uh, social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and so on, to mobilize uh, uh, this youth. I think this makes a, makes a, makes a difference. And this was something, the, the, the old parties, uh, they, they were not able, uh, they were not, not able um, to do. So this, I, I feel, made the main, uh, the main uh, difference. Uh, and it is really interesting to see that uh, that no all his, uh, his uh, followers no uh, no candidated as independent candidates and were so successful. Um, and mm -hmm. even here uh, we will come to this I'm sure in a minute. There are a lot of voices which are saying there was a high fraud that even more of his candidates won seats, but that more or less because of um, uh, of fraud and corruption. Uh, the the seat uh, uh, where where were, were taken by uh, by the PMLN, um, mm -hmm. as, but I think this is really the 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 the, the very interesting thing and I think something where we uh, because I think for your series it's interesting to see how this will work also in other elections, uh, particularly yeah. in many countries of the south that we see that social media become more and more important for election campaigns. Mm -hmm. So, so we will definitely get to the fraud piece in just a second, and to the the sort of political landscape and unpack um, these these other two big parties in just a moment. But but first off, and I think you touched on this um, earlier. It seems as if um, Khan's success, as you said, was really driven by the younger generation, by dissatisfaction with the status quo but was really a rebuke of the country's military leaders, that there's a sense of this system that's existed for over 75 years where the military has played a key role either in government or behind the scenes in mm -hmm. shaping government is just not going to work anymore. Is your sense that it's the military that was the biggest loser in this election? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, the um, military was always in the uh, comfortable situation. There are two political parties, and if they mess it up, they could jump in. Uh, the uh, the population applauded, was saying, you know, the military is coming, uh, bringing order uh, to our uh, country again. Um, so they had always, when they, it was an interesting thing, if they, uh, when they launched, launched a coup d'etat, they had always the support uh, of the population. And this changed now. So now the military can't step in again because they are, uh, they, they are so uh, unpopular within the population. So I think this is the main difference to, to former um, elections and um, political dynamics, that the military is more or less even seen uh, as, the, um, uh, as the one actor behind the jailing of Ibrahim Imran Khan. So in my mm -hmm. eyes, they really lost uh, the support of the population. And this brings them in a situation, a very delicate situation, where also more and more people in Pakistan are asking why the military is controlling so many resources. They got their own industries, their own companies. Uh, why uh, the mil military uh, is um, um, uh, is uh, uh, owning such a big cake of, of the of the state? Uh, so the uh, uh, military is coming more and more in the, in a defense uh, in um, uh, in Pakistan, but also includes, of course, a certain uh, danger. 
because mm -hmm. uh, we have always to consider that we have a nuclear power, which is uh, in uh, which is with India a strong rival, and both countries are. Uh, because of the uh, Kashmir issue uh, uh, ongoing uh, on a, in a situation uh, of, of conflict. So it might be that now the Pakistan army tries to uh, show um, uh, that they are um, so important, so necessary uh, for the country mm -hmm. uh, that they uh, also will more or less flame up again the conflict with India. Yeah, so that that this this sort of instability could continue to be quite volatile for some time to come. Um, let's maybe look at some of the other sort of figures in this in this cast of characters, if you will. It seems that that Imran Khan's major rival was the three-time former prime minister Nawaz Sharif, who you mentioned before. Um, he's the head, or he, he he seems to be he was the head of the the Pakistan Muslim League. Um, it's not clear whether he's still the leading candidate of that party. I I saw a report this morning in the Times of India, which gave sort of a, a surprise development that um, the the Muslim League had nominated um, Nawaz Sharif's brother Shebaz as the prime ministerial candidate. Um, which really, you know, came as a came as a surprise. Can you talk a little bit about? I mean, you you already mentioned that the Sharif family is one of the twenty plus wealthy Pakistan families that are really profiting from, you know, th that are doing very very well. Um, can you can you talk a little bit about the both the family, but also the party and the the role that it plays? Yeah. Well, I think um, the uh, Sharif, um, really, they're, they're, uh, they're more or less own half of the Punjab, you can say. And the Punjab mm -hmm. is more so the wheat basket uh, of um, uh, of Pakistan, and also the uh, in, where they find all this um, uh, 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 agrarian uh, industry, um, um, uh, and it's really more or less the the, the, um, uh, the engine. Of uh, the Pakistan uh, economy, um, it's a family, particular in the last uh, 40 years, 45, 50 years, uh, they became one of the richest family, and they more or less built the whole um, 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 uh, uh, the, the whole uh, PML, the Muslim League, uh, around uh, the own clan. And here, what you could observe is that um, um, uh, that Nawaz and his uh, brother Shabazz, they both worked in a kind of a tandem. This means um, that also Shabazz, he has a, a long-standing career in Pakistan. Uh, he was uh, there, uh, he was in, uh, uh, for, had himself uh, an important function within the um, Punjabi uh, government. Uh, he himself uh, was also in the last years uh, in the interim government. Um, he, he headed the interim, interim government in, uh, in uh, Pakistan. So they work in a kind of an, a tandem. Uh, and if the one uh, is doing the political job, then the other is always happy to step back. So it's more or less... Uh, it doesn't matter if now Shabazz uh, will become um, the next uh, prime minister or uh, or Na Na Nawaz. Uh, na uh, uh, yeah, uh, the the important thing is that Nawaz Sharif, in his career, as you mentioned, he became three times prime minister. Um, three times he blow up more or less uh, the government. He, there was a lot of uh, corruption um, um, cases with him. He had to leave the country, return to the country. It's, but it's the same. Uh, so he got a got a really a record um, of um, uh, a, a record uh, of uh, also you can say um, uh, political gains and on the side of political uh, losses. Um, he what what is what we find in Pakistan this is very important is that you got a, a system, particular in the countryside, that more or less the parties are telling the people who, whom to vote. So it's a really a clientelistic system in which then uh, um, whole um, uh, villages, whole small towns are voting the candidate, uh, which is uh, which um, which they are, they are asked to do. Um, from the top. So we have a lot of bonded labor, for example, in Pakistan, uh, where people are really forced to vote for the one or the other side. Mm -hmm. And the same is true with the Bhutos. And you can go back to Sulfi Kaputo, uh, who took power in the 1970s, and Benazir Bhutto, um, right. her husband, uh, 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 
uh, and then later on now um, um, uh, the son of Benadir Bhutto, um, Bilal Bhutto, uh, you get another dynasty which is more or less functioning in the same way. In the same way, they got their strongholds where they know that they got their voting banks, uh, people who have to vote them because it's told to them uh, to vote for them. And yeah. uh, again, again, here it's important to see that Imran Khan, he's more or less now targeting the middle class elites, the, the students, the young people living in the cities. Yeah. So he started, and this is by, by the whole uh, urbanization uh, of the country, where he more or less uh, tapped a completely new uh, voter, um, uh, group of voters. Mm -hmm. So you know you've you've described sort of the three family dynasties and the the three parties um, that each of them represents, um, and we've talked about them pretty much in the order that they came in in the polls, right? Khan's party, uh, the PTI, won I, I think just over a hundred seats in the parliament. Uh, the Pakistani Muslim League. Um, of the Sharifs came in second place with about 75 seats and the Pakistan's People Party, the PPP, came in with about, uh, of, of um, Bilwal Bhutto's party came in with, with over 50 seats. So you see there sort of how the concentration is. Um, in I'd like to, in just a minute, talk a little bit about some of the coalition options because it's clear that none of these parties can rule by themselves. But before we do that, um, I'd really like to talk a little bit more about this issue of corruption um, and and interference with the election, because the the PTI claimed that there was widespread military interference in the election. Um, Nawaz Sharif was the army's preferred candidate, which is sort of ironic because he was actually pushed out of power in 2017 after losing support for the army, but this is a sign that things can change in, in Pakistan pretty quickly. Um, and we talked about the fact that uh, the PTI was banned from using its its symbol of the cricket bat, um, which is a problem in a country where lots of people are illiterate. So I'm, I'm curious, as an outside observer, um, whether you think that the election was was marred and and not credible, sort of what your take is on the outcome and, and how much electoral interference you think might actually have been in play? Well, that's very difficult to say. We, of course, see that uh, the US and Europe are already calling for an inquiry uh, of frauds uh, during the election. I think what we always see in Pakistan and Pakistan politics, it's all, always seen through the focus of uh, security. So uh, this means that um, it's always that something works or not works. It's always meant, hey, because of security, um, uh, there, there are certain rules and regulations uh, which are um, uh, which are um, um, uh, uh, which are um, uh, uh, took out of order. Um, what you could see in this case was that in the um, in the uh, run-ups to the election, we saw we see a lot of terror attacks. I think we were about 40, 50 people killed in terror attacks. This means that uh, directly um, in the in the uh, uh, run run-up of the election, there was always this atmosphere of insecurity, um, and that more or less also than the military had the argument at hand to say. Uh, look, uh, for security reasons, we have to interfere here and there. So this is something important mm -hmm. to understand uh, elections in Pakistan. And this is actually what happens then during the election. So uh, during the election, particularly when the um, uh, when the, the counting uh, took place, the internet and the mobile net uh, uh, were, were down. I think this was very important. Uh, then second was was very strange. The uh, counting of the votes took very very long. It took more than sixty hours. Usually this goes in Pakistan much much faster. Usually have about twenty four hours. You could so there were already rumors why it took this time so long. Mm -hmm. um, then we, there were certain uh, certain uh, situations where ballot boxes boxes were sealed by the military again for security reasons and how wonder. Uh, later counted, and then you uh, were, were wondering that particular in this ballot box says uh, always Nawaz Sharif or the candidate of Nawaz Sharif uh, won um, uh, the, the, the post. 
Um, and then there was, of course, one thing where it was very striking that uh, GOTV, GOTV is the most, they can say, the most critical media you have in Pakistan, um, that they were uh, switched off. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, they uh, were switched off because they were the uh, the, the um, TV station which reported about the water turns uh, turnouts and uh, uh, the, the surprising gains of the PTI. Uh, so, and when it became more more clear that all Pakistani followed the, the Geo TV, TV, and it became more and more clear. Uh, that um, uh, that uh, the PTI was the uh, was the, the the winner of this election. They were just uh, uh, switched off. So these are all uh, indica indicators that there are something going on uh, behind the curtain. What exactly? Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, uh, we don't know. But it's, it gives a good argument why now PTA is claiming that there were election frauds uh, and that mm -hmm. the in in investigation uh, is needed. So the the sort of next chapter in this really interesting story is, you know, obviously, as we've talked about, the fact that none of the parties um, will be able to to form a government without partnering with somebody. And, and this leads to a, a lack of clarity about who the next prime minister will be. But there's also a certain amount of time pressure, right? The Constitution says that political parties have to form a government within three weeks of the election. So that would put the date at February 29th. So basically in two weeks, um, a government would have to form. Um, can you talk a little bit about what kind of um, coalition options are even possible? Uh, would the military even support a government that would include Imran Khan? Yeah, well, I think that um, uh, you're completely right. I think the Constitution says within three weeks um, there should be a new government, and even more in two weeks' time, there's a very important meeting between the Pakistan government and the IMF. And uh, because of the desolate uh, economic situation uh, in Pakistan, this is a very extreme important meeting that there's also a government um, uh, which is responsible and uh, can talk to the IMF. Uh, here it's very much about a bailout uh, of Pakistan, uh, otherwise the country is uh, bankrupt. So I think this is why, why we have really a, here a ticking bomb and the government has to be, um, uh, 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 there has to be a new government as soon as, poly, uh, as possible. Uh, today we saw that more or less now the two parties, the two old parties, uh, the Muslim League and the Pakistan People Party, that agreed on a government, and then they collected six of the minor parties, which have always uh, one to max, in, uh, max of sixteen seats, but most of them one or two seats, uh, to gain uh, the majority. Uh, so they need in total 169 seats uh, out of uh, 336 seat, seats uh, to have uh, a government. Um, and that they, I think, under the pressure uh, of the Pakistan uh, military, that they have no uh, to to join forces. And here we have you no know, the two uh, uh, enemies which have no to come together and which were, say, we were already saying, yes, mm -hmm. let's build a new government. But uh, this might even be possible that they will have come to a government. But uh, we have always to 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 think uh, to see that this is more or less perhaps not against the majority of the voters, but at least against a strong um, a strong part of the population. I think this we have really to consider. And this yeah. became already also clear within the last five days. So we see already that the, there's a high frustration uh, within the Pakistan population. We saw a, block, a roadblock uh, by uh, demonstrations between uh, the two cities of Islamabad uh, and Peshawar, where they blocked the highway. Uh, we could see demonstration and rallies uh, across uh, the, the the country. Um, um, so there are many many things going on that the, where the people are showing that they are unsatisfied uh, with this political system. So it might be that now the um, uh, the um, old enemies will now uh, join forces and uh, come up with the government. But you see the very strong split between them. Uh, and uh, the population uh, or the, um, the people in Pakistan. And this creates a lot of, uh, uh, un, uh, uh, of uh, unsatisfied uh, uh, people within the country. Mm -hmm. 
and I mean, there's even been some violence in in some of those occasions, right? There have been there have been you know not just protests and demonstrations, but really some some violence. So it gives a sense of how this really is a, t a tinderbox at a time when Pakistan has to show some stability, particularly if it's trying to get funding from the IMF. Absolutely. I think that's the main uh, problem that we uh, just see. I mean, so far, I think this was more, more or less uh, violent only on the local um, level. Um, uh, Imran Khan and the PTI, uh, they are calling or they're saying, uh, please, uh, no violence, uh, stop violence. Um, but uh, it might really, um, 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 as you mentioned, it's a tinderbox where all this frustration about unemployment, ecological system, all this comes together and the whole uh, thing might, might blow up. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have to consider that we have already, since many years, a high level of violence in the country, that we have the uh, Tariq Taliban Pakistan, so the Pakistan um, uh, Taliban, uh, they, they um, had a lot of terror attacks over the last month, which uh, destabilized m many parts of the country. So it's a situation which really might blow up. And uh, here again, I don't think that the military is the one who can step in again uh, uh, to um, uh, to build a government. If they are doing so, uh, I think people uh, uh, will not uh, like them anymore. So it's really a very tricky situation we are entering mm -hmm. now. Um, do Do you think at all that the the PTI could merge with a smaller party or some of the other smaller parties and and just? Well, so I think the PTI as such uh, is, or the the, uh, the independent candidates are not allowed yeah. to build um, uh, 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 because they are not a, a part, belong not, not to a party. They yeah. can't um, uh, uh, they ca can't um, 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 uh, provide a government. Uh, so the idea, which was uh, discussed in the last days, was if they are all all these independent candidates would join one party. Then they would be uh, they would would be strong enough uh, to um, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to to um, at least raise their voice to become part of the government. Uh, I don't think that that's likely. I think um, that it became very clear that the PTI was also mentioning they don't want to go into coalition uh, with one of the uh, two other uh, parties. Um, right. They, it's more or less a kind of uh, taking or take it or leave it. Uh, so they just want to show um, we are the one who want to um, uh, who going to co control the government, uh, but we are not uh, ready to uh, to uh, join with the PPP or the uh, PMLN. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, you know, given the level of of instability that has really come to the surface as a result of these elections. Um, do you think it's also a possibility that a coalition will not form and there will have to be new elections? Is that a, an option? I, I think this would be an option that that, the, um, that um, uh, Imran Khan would be released, uh, that the military will find a deal with Imran Khan uh, saying, OK, um, um, although we, our, our history was not the, uh, the most friendly and best one, let's try it again. Um, but of course, Imran Khan himself, he has an interest also to weaken uh, the, uh, the, the military. I think this was in his time was that he reduced the, um, uh, the um, budget of the military strongly. And uh, so mm -hmm. I think that there's really no trust between the military and Imran Khan. If it mm -hmm. comes to new election, we can imagine that there is a kind of a deal between the military and uh, Imran Khan. Um, it shows currently that um, it's perhaps the first time that uh, the democracy, and it's really, I think we have always to, to say that, uh, that we have this democracy in Pakistan, it's really sometimes wondering me a lot because uh, it's always something where people have to go in the streets and defend their uh, right uh, to vote, that we perhaps uh, uh, observe currently a momentum where the first time the, uh, Afg the, the people in Pakistan try to emanc emancipate and really to bring up um, democracy, which is not controlled by the military. Mm -hmm. You know, Conrad, given, given sort of everything that's going on, um, if, if you had to predict what would happen um, what do you think the most likely outcome is? That's that's a question that one of our, our viewers posed. Yeah, well, I think uh, because um, 
I mean, I, I'm now following Pakistan politics since, I think, since uh, more than 30, 40 years. And you always had the impression um, that there's a lot of um, enthusiasm within the population for a certain change. So uh, always if a new politician comes up, everybody is enthusiastic about it, thinking, okay, now a uh, change will, will happen. And then you see that the traditional forces are so strong that nothing happens. And this all remains the same. And this is why all also I also also um, um, uh, had the feeling that also in this election, the, in the end, the PML will win. This was my uh, my, my strong uh, feeling that here the uh, the military and the PML they will somehow able that the PML will get enough, get enough votes uh, to become here the strongest force, and then with the three or four of the smaller parties uh, uh, will gain power. Uh, and uh, so. Um, and I think this is something where then you when the, when the surprise is ca ca coming from that no, we have a situation that pe that the people are saying no and that the people are saying we really want to have this change uh, and I think perhaps here is, um, the, uh, the social media are so important mm -hmm. uh, to show that a change is possible but again we have to say that Imram Khan he is not somehow uh, the, the person who is no. Um, uh, the the one who uh, brings the revolution to Pakistan society, but that he also has certain conservative um, ideas, and that also in his time that he also had here and there some undemocratic uh, movements. So I think it's not the one way we can say he is no the one who will no um, um, bring democracy to the country and change everything. But he also has his dark side, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, but but it also raises a lot of other questions right it's it's sort of has have the 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 prison sentences that khan is being subjected to have they actually um galvanized people around him or have mm -hmm. they made people more wary of him and everything that his movement stands for no um, i think that it, it, it strengthened him i think the reason is that uh, more or less uh, if you see if you're going to back to zulfika bhutto and then Binazir uh, Bhutto, Nawaz Sharif, they all were jailed for once in their lifetime. Right. So I think to become a politician in Pakistan, you have to go for, to jail for a couple of years. This is more or less part of the political right. career in Pakistan. So, and this is something you, you, you're always, uh, the p p p politicians in Pakistan are more or less always, um, uh, um, uh, are always at court and uh, are more or less uh, and are very often jailed. So this is something which more or less even strengthens their their, their position. It's not the way that because you are jailed, uh, you are um, uh, seen as a paria or somebody uh, you have not any trust anymore. No, it's more that they are seen as uh, if you are if you are if you are jailed for whatever reasons, it's more or less seen as no, you are you are you are being part of the political game in Pakistan. It's 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 ironic, but it is almost a, 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 a proof of your legitimacy, the fact that you've been Absolutely. In, in Pakistan. Absolutely. Um, we, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about what's going on in Pakistan. Um, you, you talked about this important meeting with the IMF, which, which um, obviously is of great importance to the country and the future of the country. But can you talk a little bit about the the international response to what's what's going on in in Pakistan right now? Well, well this is I think very interesting because you see that there are uh, I mentioned this that the Europeans, the Americans, they raise their voices and say we need an investigation uh, of this uh, election. Who is mute? Uh, are the Chinese? Uh, and this mm -hmm. is interesting because over the last twenty years, China became more or less the major player major international player uh, in Pakistan. So Pakistan is a very uh, important uh, jigsaw uh, for the uh, Belt and Road Initiative of the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese invest billions and billions in Pakistan and even got a strong influence uh, on Pakistan uh, politics. Uh, some are even saying that it's more or less the, uh, the latest colony of the Chinese uh, in Asia. Uh, so there's a strong, in the, uh, the strong dependency of um, uh, Pakistan uh, from uh, from China. And the Chinese are not saying anything, um, but in my eyes, the Chinese are very strongly, uh, or they, they understood the game in Pakistan very well, and I think they are particularly always um, 
consult the military in Pakistan as the main mm -hmm. um, uh, as the main block. So I think uh, they are currently uh, patient. They are not um, they they are not really um, commenting uh, the elections. They are just uh, waiting and see uh, in which direction the whole thing uh, is is going. Um, uh, the role of Russia is difficult to say. My Russia has always an interest in Pakistan, uh, but it's very difficult to say. Same with, with India. Um, and uh, although uh, India and Pakistan are rivals for many, many years, you could always see that in a situation where the instability in Pakistan was very high, the Indian government had always a strong interest in the stability in Pakistan. I think uh, they are always very afraid about um, that uh, that instability will increase uh, within the country. So they here yeah. and there, particularly in the Balochistan issue, they try to interfere. But in total, they are uh, they are the, the Indians are also, uh, I would say, currently very concerned about the situation in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So, so one of our our viewers um, submitted a question that that goes in a somewhat different direction. Um, can you do you do you have a sense of what the migration situation is in Pakistan? Are, are more people coming to Pakistan or are more people leaving Pakistan? Well, I think the migration issue is an important uh, thing. We see, of course, many uh, in and out migration from. Uh, Pakistanis to the to the Gulf states. You have um, uh, more than than two million um, Pakistanis uh, living in, in uh, the Gulf states, working there. But more important, um, uh, in the run up to this election, uh, the Afghan refugees uh, in Pakistan became a highly politicized uh, topic. Uh, and uh, in October last year. Uh, the uh, Pakistan government announced that they want to kick out all the Afghans uh, out of the country. We have roughly about three and a half to four and a half million um, Afghans living in Pakistan. Um, and um, um, there was the Pakistani really it took a system very serious. Uh, they really um, kicked out more than half a million uh, Afghans over the last month, um, sent them back to Afghanistan. The Afghans were not allowed to take um, uh, uh, to, to take their goods with them, uh, only for 100 euro or so on. All the other um, um, supplies they had, they had, they had to uh, rest in uh, Pakistan. Um, and there was really a very anti-Afghan um, uh, in, uh, uh, atmosphere created uh, by the Pakistan uh, government uh, in Afghanistan. So the Afghans became the scapegoat uh, uh, in the run-up of this election. Um, and um, uh, I think this was also a big issue in this election, particularly the PML, the uh, Muslim League, made this point very, very strong and hoped to gain voters by this very strong policy against um, the Afghan migrants. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So as as we you know start to 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 wrap up here, um, it's obviously a very complex situation, but it's also a emerging situation where it seems like almost every day there's a new piece of information coming out that changes the variables a little bit. Um, what are you going to be watching, and what would you recommend that we pay attention to? as this plays out in the, the days and even weeks ahead? Well, I think what's the interesting question is, um, I, I uh, can imagine that now uh, uh, under the um, pressure of the, of the Pakistan army, uh, the, uh, the PPP, the Pakistan, um, uh, uh, the Pakistan um, People's Party, uh, and the Muslim League uh, will, um, uh, will create a new government, and this, it might be that it seems the way, okay, now the establishment uh, gained power again, and if they'd like them or not, they will be somehow able to govern this uh, country. Um, and now I think it's interesting to see how particular in uh, wire channels like, like social media, uh, like protests uh, on, the, uh, on the local level, particularly in the cities um, in Pakistan, uh, the people will raise their voice against this government. Uh, I think we reached really a point 
uh, where we can see that people want to have a change in the political system. And I think this is the, where I will now have my eyes and ears uh, on for next for the next month to see what's happening, particularly in the big cities like in Lahore, in uh, Karachi, in, uh, in Pindi, uh, to see to how, how this atmosphere uh, is changing now. Um, and of course, this would be a, uh, if this would be a kind um, of uh, re revolution. Uh, it's a question if now the establishment uh, another time will be able uh, to gain control and just to um, um, to uh, continue the system as it is, or um, when the next situation will happen, uh, that is next event will happen, uh, that uh, this uh, system will become so much under threat that it has to has to be changed. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess, I guess, related to that though, if if things go in this direction um, that you are are sort of anticipating, they might of the the People's Party, the PPP, and the PMLN um, forming a coalition together. How effective do you really think that government could be, given that the independent candidates had won most of the seats? Well, I think um, more or less, uh, if we take the, the Sharifs, if we take um, uh, Asif Zadari, the uh, the former the, the former the husband of uh, Benazir Bhutto, uh, they uh, they are all seen as uh, corrupt, corrupt, and corrupt. Uh, Asif Zadari, for example, is called uh, Mr. Twenty Percent in uh, Pakistan because he's known that he always takes for for each uh, uh, thing he always takes a share of twenty percent. It's a really very uh, corrupt class, and there is no trust in this class. Uh, yeah. I think this is the main uh, problem. I think uh, uh, Pakistan would be uh, uh, would. Um, well, uh, be caught in a situation where, where the government uh, perhaps can have another deal with the IMF to get another fresh money, but it's not a government which really can change anything. And um, if you like Imam Khan or not, he at least tried uh, to have some changes in the economy of the country, um, to uh, mention that he uh, cut the budget of the uh, military, uh, who started with uh, some very important uh, environmental uh, programs to really try uh, to modernize uh, the country. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what the people in Pakistan expect. Uh, the PMLN as well as the PPP, they're doing just clientelistic politics. Mm -hmm. they're, not in the, they're not in the way uh, for this kind of modernization. I don't see anyone in both parties who, who is able to do this. So this mm -hmm. would be a tragedy for the country. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean, it seems like this is something that's really open right now and where we really can't anticipate how it will develop in the, the days and weeks ahead. Um, you know, I certainly feel like we've talked about a lot of different issues. And, and I, I'm, I'm curious whether there's anything that we have not yet talked about that you feel we should have touched on or, or covered. Well, I think one issue I'm was I touched on is, of course, the whole question of um, radicalization in the country. Yeah, I think we always uh, have to bear in the back of our mind that the country where we got in different on different levels a radicalization of society. We have it on uh, on the ethnic level, uh, Balu particularly the Baluchis uh, in the far west half of the country. They are more or less. Uh, the uh, Baluch um, uh, province uh, covers 56% uh, of the country, are very unhappy with the government. There's a more or less a kind of um, a civil war going on between the Baluch uh, and the uh, and central government. Uh, the same is true for the, for the Pashtuns, uh, who, are, um, uh, uh, who are, again, also very unsatisfied with the government. So we have this strong um, um, uh, ethnic... Um, uh, uh, ethnic uh, politics here, which always turn violent. Uh, we have, of course, um, uh, extremism uh, uh, in religious terms, uh, which is very strong in Pakistan. Uh, I mentioned the uh, the Tariq the Tariq Taliban uh, Pakistan, which is very important. We have a, a, a high number of jihadi uh, groups in the country, which are yeah. destabilizing the country. Um, and I think there's another question, uh, despite this, um, the, uh, the, the democratic process, how these parties in a situation of instability, 
uh, what they will deal, uh, what they will do. Many of these parties, particularly of the jihadi groups, are linked to the Pakistan intelligence. And the question is, what will happen now? Uh, it could be, we could, for example, um, it could happen that the Kashmir uh, conflict will blow up again, that this will be seen as a way now uh, to uh, to have an, another uh, conflict, uh, which will then create more again a social cohesion within the uh, Pakistan population. Uh, we saw uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, this um, uh, this violence uh, or this uh, conflict between uh, Iran and uh, Pakistan when first Iran uh, bombed um, uh, did, a, did an attack on terrorist groups in uh, Pakistan and then Pakistan did the same in Iran. Uh, so uh, it is really a hotbed. It's really a, a conflict situation. Uh, Pakistan is uh, part of many interlinked conflicts where we can uh, where we don't know which of this conflict also will be used by the uh, Pakistan uh, military uh, to have an excuse uh, for this um, uh, democratic situation within the country. Well, and so certainly there's a, a lot to keep track of, a lot to follow. Um, Pakistan is a, a complex country and there um, are lots of factors at play, but I just want to thank you so much for for taking the time to to help parse that for us, to help us understand the situation there, um, and certainly give us better insights on what to look out for uh, as this story continues to unfold. Herzlichen Dank. Yeah, sehr gerne. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.